a five-fold ministry. Because some put apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher together as one ministry. And some divide them into pastor and teacher. Both are right. Pastors must also be teachers. But not all teachers are pastors. I have been a teacher all of my life. I did the work of a pastor just like Timothy was told by Paul to do the work of an evangelist. I did the work of a pastor even though I do not have, I have never had a pastoral gifting. I did the work of a pastor until it was time for me to move into what I was called to do. Lord spent most of my life getting me ready for what he was called me to do and that is not pastor. I'm not a pastor. Whatever else I am a different teacher that's God's problem I'm not the least bit interested in affixing titles of that I'll let God and others do that but the point is I'm not a pastor I have been places where I've done the work of an evangelist I participated as the preacher in a Holy Ghost crusade in Lusaka Zambia in South Central Africa in 1995 uh, and we prayed through 2,252 people in one weekend in that crusade and I was the evangelist trust me I'm not an evangelist but I did the work of an evangelist that weekend that's not my ministry I don't really have a ministry to the church because primary my primary God's primary way of using my gifting is teaching preachers Now, I do other stuff, but that's what my primary gifting is. The senior leader or minister is at a specific uh, geographical church, may or may not have a pastoral gifting. You can be the senior leader of a church and not be a pastor. I was, I am. I'm the Bishop of Antioch. I have never had a pastoral gifting. You know who did most of the real pastoring for 35 years? My wife. She was the one that could, took, kept track of who was there. She's the one that called the ones that weren't. You know who I call? The ones the Lord pointed out call so-and-so. That's right. Praise God. The gifting of an apostolic ministry does not always directly correlate to being the senior oversight ministry. A bishop does not have to be an apostle. Nor is an apostle automatically a bishop. The proposed structure that is the focus of this uh, seminar, this teaching lesson, requires that there be one or more ministers gifted with the apostolic ministry for the purpose of pioneering congregations. We have men in our con in our in at Antioch who are apostles. We have one man that started five of the congregations out of the 20 we have going. He's not really a pastor. He's an apostle. He is, he, we send, I send him into areas as the Lord leads to start a congregation. When it gets up to a certain place, he has to be sent on because he does not have a pastoral gifting to take it beyond that place. That is an apostolic ministry. I have three of those. We have three guys right now that have apostolic ministries. There are at least two prophets at Antioch. One of them sitting right up there. Because of his ministry to that church and how God uses him, he is recognized and has been recognized from the pulpit by both the bishop and the senior pastor and every other ministry there as being a prophet of God to Antioch. He is the, he's doing the work of pastoring our main congregation. But his two giftings are prophetic and evangelistic. Why would that be? You've probably heard the name Brother Barnes, quoted by your bishop and by others who come through here. He was a great man of God and had much influence on many of us. He taught and teaches that uh, 
that both the prophetic and the apostolic ministries have to be protected by being clothed or encased in one of the other ministries. So therefore, Brother Barnes was a pastor for years, even though everybody recognized that his greatest gifting was prophet. His, his day-to-day job was pastor. So either usually it's either the ministry of a, an evangelist or the ministry of a pastor, and it can be when the office is different than either one of those, the ministry of a teacher, one of those three will probably be the most visible ministry of either a prophet or an apostle. But again, we're talking giftings. Okay? There are five giftings or ministry functions to the church. Webster's definition of gifting is to present something as a gift to, to endow with. It's something imparted. Webster's de, de, uh, English Dictionary definition of function is the normal or characteristic action of anything, especially any of the natural uh, specialized actions of a system, organ, or part of an animal or plant. A specific duty or performance required in the course of work or activity, occupation, or employment. So notice... Function as a synonym is the broad general term for the natural required or expected activity of a person or thing. Office in this connection refers to the function of a person as determined by his position, profession, or employment. The fact that that these are giftings or functions of ministry and not offices is clearly demonstrated by the fact... uh, that on many occasions in the New Testament, a single individual is identified as having more than one of these ministries. First Timothy 2, 7, whereunto I am ordained a preacher and an apostle, I speak the truth in love and lie not, a teacher of the Gentiles in faith and verity. Paul identified himself as having both the giftings of an apostle and of a teacher. Those aren't offices. Now, I will say this to you. As I, and I will repeat it when I get farther on here. There are some apostolic ministries that are so predominant and so impacting on the church that even though the majority of the work they do is actually the office, not the gifting, but the office of a bishop, the primary title that that person is known by is not bishop, but apostle. Now, again, not all apostles are bishops. we got three guys on our staff in our church who are apostles. They are not bishops. They will not be bishops. But there are some apostolic ministries that are so, so predominant, so used of God uh, in the overall scheme of things, not in a local situation, but in the overall dimension of the church, that they are do that that they're that they're actually performing the office of a bishop, but it's called an apostle, and Paul is one of those. Paul never refers to himself as a bishop, even though when you see the explanation of what a bishop is, you will see that the Paul did that. He traveled overseeing the churches. That's what a bishop does. The word bishop literally means visitation. For the purpose of oversight or superintendence. Paul did that. He called it the work of an apostle. Or of his apostleship. But it was actually, it was his apostolic gifting. But it was his bishop office. Now, when he said, I magnify my office in the King James. The Greek word there for office is actually ministry or gifting. It was not the word for a position. When he talked about him being an apostle, he said, I magnify mine office. He was not talking about his 